Can you really manipulate foods to give you a lower blood sugar response? My name is Diana Lacalzi and I'm a registered dietitian and a certified diabetes care and education specialist. Today we're going to discuss how you can lower the glycemic index of certain carbohydrates like potatoes, rice, bread, and pasta. So if that sounds good to you, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. So let's start with the glycemic index. The glycemic index is an extent to which a certain food raises your blood sugar levels. And it is true that certain cooking methods can actually lower the glycemic index of specific carbohydrates so that they're more favorable for your blood sugar levels. But before we go into it, how does this actually work? The simple answer is through a process called starch retrogradation. There are many different starches and an important one to remember is resistant starch. So resistant starch is a type of starch found in some carbohydrates and we can't digest it. Our digestive enzymes literally can't break it down so it travels through our whole gastrointestinal tract undigested. Ultimately, it reaches our large intestine where it's then gobbled up by our gut bacteria. That's why resistant starch is known as a prebiotic. It serves as food for our gut bacteria. So because resistant starch goes undigested, you end up absorbing less calories and less carbohydrates from that food. And because of this, foods that tend to have higher levels of resistant starch also tend to have a lower glycemic index and less of an impact on your blood sugar levels. So can you change the amount of starch in a food? The answer is yes. So cooking breaks down a lot of resistant starch. So for example, potatoes have a lot of resistant starch, but when you cook a potato, you break down a lot of those resistant starches. But the cool thing is you can actually reform some of those resistant starches through the process of retrogradation. When they reform, they become indigestible again, reducing the glycemic index of that food. And one of the most common cooking methods that contribute to retrogradation is cooking then cooling starches. So let's start with potatoes. One way to achieve retrogradation is to cook them first and then cool them. And the research backs this up. Studies show that cooked then cooled potatoes have more resistant starch than just cooked potatoes. One study found that this process led to three extra grams of resistant starch per 100 gram serving. And the best part is this led to a reduction in glucose response by nearly 40%. Another study found that consuming one cup of cooked then chilled potatoes led to both lower glucose and insulin levels compared to just eating hot boiled potatoes. Similar potatoes cooking and cooling white rice can have a very similar effect. One study looked at different preparation methods for cooking white rice, and the researchers found that cooking the rice and then cooling it for 24 hours at 39 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about the same temperature as your refrigerator, and then reheating the rice led to a more favorable glycemic response than just eating it after cooking it. So yes, you can reheat the foods after you've cooled them to get the same glycemic effect. And like potatoes and rice, cooking then cooling pasta also has very similar effects. One study found that both chilled and reheated pasta led to a better glucose response than just fresh hot boiled pasta. And similar to the rice, reheating the pasta after it's been cooled still led to a significant reduction in blood sugar compared to just eating the hot pasta. Lastly, what about bread? You can actually achieve similar results by keeping your bread in the freezer. Freezing your bread, then defrosting it and toasting it can actually lead to a much better glucose response than if you were to eat your bread fresh. So while cooking and cooling certain foods can definitely improve your blood sugar response with certain carbohydrates, there are other tricks you can implement as well. Here are other ways you can change the glycemic index of carbohydrates. So number one is to use whole grain or bean-based pastas. These varieties have higher fiber and higher protein. Therefore, they're going to be digested more slowly and into your bloodstream at a slower rate. Number two is cook pasta al dente. So cooking your pasta al dente is how the Italians actually cook their pasta. It's cooking pasta until it's still a little bit firm. So because it's not cooked all the way through, it is going to take longer to digest. And again, it'll enter your bloodstream a lot slower. Number three, adding vinegar or lemon juice to rice, potato, pasta dishes, is going to lower the glycemic effect of these foods. The acid that's found in lemon juice and apple cider vinegar is actually going to slow down the digestion of carbohydrates. And therefore, it's going to lower the rate at which glucose enters your bloodstream. Number four is add vegetables to your dishes. Mixing cooked pasta, rice, and potatoes with vegetables is going to increase the fiber content of that meal and lower the glycemic response. So saute or steam your favorite vegetables like bell peppers, broccoli, zucchini, spinach, kale, and mix it in with those carbohydrate 
heavy dishes. And lastly, make sure you're including protein and or healthy fat with your meals. Including lean protein and healthy fats in your dishes is going to slow the absorption of carbohydrates into your bloodstream and again, lower the glycemic effect of that meal. So lean proteins include things like tofu, tempeh, legumes. If you do eat animal products, aim for fish, shellfish, chicken breast with no skin. And healthy fats can be things like olive oil, olives, nuts, seeds, avocado. So there you have it. Experiment with these different tips and see what works best for you. We all do have different glycemic responses to food. So experimenting with these different tips is a great way to figure out what is going to work for you. So if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.